clock. We put 30 seconds on the clock and ask each of our analysts one question. We're going to start with Sam Acho. When will Justin Fields take over as the Bears starting quarterback? Man, I think it's going to be sooner than I initially predicted. I'm saying we on Kansas City, but Matt Nagy, I don't think is patient enough to let Justin Fields sit and wait and watch and learn. I'm going Week four for Justin Fields. Nacho predicting excitement in week four in Chicago. Jeff Darlington, we have a theme today. When will Mac Jones take over as the starting quarterback in New England? 30 seconds, go. Two days after Tom Brady goes into Foxborough in week four and demoralizes Bill Belichick oh. and the New England Patriots, Goodness. Belichick won to the podium just not keeping his cool or his calm like he always does and says I can't take it anymore I got to go to Mac Jones I have no idea <laughs> nor do I believe that that will actually happen but I love the idea of it in the storyline in all seriousness maybe that feels like the right time who knows but I feel like you know week five is the time of year when all of a sudden you start to see teams trying to make a shift that's when I think Mac Jones will get the starting nod I know that we've heard Belichick say, I can't take it anymore uh, before. So we'll see if that happens. <laughs> Marcus right. Spears, when does Trey Lance take over for the 49ers? DG, this is what they do in the black church when you need to excuse yourself while the pastor giving a sermon, but that don't mean this right now. This means week one, okay? Trey <laughs> Lance is going to give this offense things that, that Shanahan has never had. And yes, I know he struggled in, in half of that game, but when you look at this offense, which is so difficult to guard, it's damn near impossible to guard with an immobile quarterback. Now you add a guy and you can play with everybody that's an offensive weapon, I don't think you wait, especially in the division that's going to be tough. Trey Lance, week one, start. Marcus Spears with the educational take there. Niners open with a pair of road games to Detroit <laughs> and Philly before their home opener against the Packers in week three, so we'll see on Trey Lance. The quarterbacks picked in the first round of this year's draft have had their ups and downs so far. Zach Wilson of the Jets leads them all in completion percentage, while Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones are the only two who have yet to throw a touchdown pass this preseason. So let's keep it here on the topic of rookie quarterbacks. The league was generous enough to give us five first rounders this year to give us a lot of preseason storylines. I want to ask each of you guys which rookie looks to you to be the most NFL ready right now. Sam Acho, you're first. Oh, it's Justin Fields. That's easy. Like that, Justin Fields every day of the week that ends in Y. Look at the let's watch the film. Straight up, just watch the film. Like this dude has escapability. He has he's calm in the pocket. He can make every throw. And he just feels like he's a natural born leader the way he leads. And, and then listen, not only watch, listen to his interview. So I think he's the most NFL ready. Darlington, who you got? I feel bad because uh, I think there was a miscommunication with our graphics department. They're going to put up Zach Wilson right now because they think that's what I'm going to say. But it's actually Trevor Lawrence. Can we not forget? Go ahead. Put it up. Put up Zach Wilson. That's fine. Trevor Lawrence is a generational talent, okay? He is too important, too good for us to just use a couple preseason games to all of a sudden decide that he's not the guy. Yes, Zach Wilson looks very nice. He looks very good. But I am not going to stop believing that Trevor Lawrence is the best quarterback that we've seen coming out of the draft since Peyton Manning. See, they're not putting the graphic up. They're trying to figure this out, how they can fix this. It's not Zach Wilson. It's Trevor Lawrence. Jeff making enemies in the graphics department. Marcus Spears, who's your answer? Which rookie's most ready for the NFL right now? Zach Wilson, I don't know what the hell these other two dudes been watching. Listen, we are based on <laughs> what they've done in the preseason. We ain't talking about college. We know Trevor Lawrence is making us change our damn mind. But when I see this kid play, when I see this offense coupled with Mike LaFleur and what, the, what position he's putting them in, Zach Wilson looks the most ready to play. And that doesn't mean Trump, uh, Justin Fields doesn't look ready to play because he does and he should start week one, not week four. 
Sam Macho, and we know Trevor Lawrence has the talent <laughs> and the ability to play at an elite level. But the bottom line is what we know now about what we've seen these guys do in the NFL, Zach Wilson looks the most ready. Oh, he preseason. Swag Fields Fields looks preseason. Great. They all look great. I mean, I like them all. I don't know. Again, we're still waiting on Jeff's pick. Jeff I want to throw in. I want to throw in Mac Jones because I think he looks NFL ready too. I'm not saying he's going to get the start. I think Cam Newton in front of him. But what we've seen from That's Mac a Jones, one. a lot of confidence. You know, the timing has been good. He, it, none of these guys look like the situation is too big for them, uh, and that includes Mac Jones, who was the fifth one of the five taken. So a lot of excitement with here. these young guys in. The NFL and, and the graphics department has a message for Jeff Darling. Yeah, oh, Jeff. There you go. What's we up? We don't What's hate up? you, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> graphics department. They had enough, high they had enough time to write that, but not put the graphic. That's saying something, Jeff. That's because, saying something, Jeff. They they could they could mess it up for you if they wanted to. They have that power. But, hey, that's, that's for power. sure. That's power. It's time now for Swaggy says. We used to all wonder about them guys. What does Swagoo say? G, you know what I say? I say Daniel Jones is a gangster. He's lying, G. Look at me today, G. I'm already a beast. So we just gonna be beastie. I call you broke. Yeah, you are my bro. Are you crying, son? This is not exactly how I meant for this to go. Take that and smoke it. This is Swagoo says where we play some sound from around the NFL. We hear what the the individuals in question are saying, and then Marcus Spears interprets it and tells you what he thinks they're really saying. So we're going to start in Chicago with Bears coach Matt Nagy talking about quarterback Andy Dalton. Andy's decision making has been has been really good. Um, you know, we ha we we had some plays where he's he's made some plays that maybe couldn't have or, or shouldn't have been able to make, and he has, but. Um, we just want to continue. We like where, what he's doing right now with the ones in practice, but we also like where being QB1, and it's my time now. He's going to be a hell of a backup and a great sounding boy for just the fields as the season goes along. That's what Matt Nagy needed to say. That's what he meant to say. And eventually, we're going to see him say it, D. All right, next in Foxborough, Bill Belichick asked what it will take for someone to overtake Cam Newton as the starting quarterback. We, we all have to reestablish every year our level of performance and our competency. And, and, you know, the guys who have been there, somebody has to show that they're better than them or that player has to be unavailable. All right. And that's that's the way it is at every position. That's not it's not unique to any position. It's that's the way it is across the board. Marcus, what's Bill saying there? Man, listen, I love Cam. I have a great affinity for him, but I'm a big LeBron fan, D DG. So I'm gonna let LeBron speak for me. This is what Bill Belichick was saying. <laughs> that's what he said, man. Be better tomorrow, bro. I just need you to be better than the guy that's in front of you, and you can take over this starting spot. Cam being out five days. I love Cam. I got to play the best player. That's all Bill was saying, man. <laughs> and finally today on Swagoo and LeBron says, Aaron Rodgers was asked, Remember, he hosted Jeopardy for a couple weeks this offseason. They asked him, would he have accepted the job if they'd offered it to him full time? If they offered you the job, would you have taken it? Yeah, I definitely would have. If they would have figured out a way to work it, make it work with my schedule, yeah, for sure. Thoughts? Amen. Listen, we just press pause. I'm a host Jeopardy when I retire. They just holding the spot till I'm done playing, man. Whenever that's going to be. I think you're probably right. More money and you don't have to worry about getting hit. 
it. That's it for Swag Who Says with a special appearance this week by LeBron James. Later today on ESPN, we're going to have two more Little League World Series elimination games from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. It all starts at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Coming up.